Good afternoon. I am Shibani. This is Jen uh, Jennifer Jenmark and uh, our amazing uh, mentor, Dr. Epstein. Uh, we present to you the Jew Project. The objective of this project is to create a new physics experiments to replace the old ones to be performed in uh, first semester physics uh, classes and to write a manual for them. Uh, the first experiment that we'll be replacing is a uh, uniformly accelerated motion, measurement of uh, G gravity. Um, the old one, um, it has been performed uh, using the spark timer apparatus which uh, the last one uh, became non-functional as of this year. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the pictures we took in the beginning, uh, in the beginning weeks for the early trials we did. Um, we basically recorded slow, uh, slow motion videos of uh, different balls dropped uh, from a height of about two meters and uh, imported them to this uh, PASCO capstone software to analyze them. Um, as you see uh, right here, this are the, the red plus marks are the positions of the uh, balls uh, every five uh, frame as um, the ball is falling. And using this data, we, will, um, we um, created the graph of uh, position versus time and velocity versus time. Uh, the velocity versus time will, ch uh, will eventually give us uh, the acceleration value. Uh, as you see right here, um, the slope of uh, the velocity versus time is 9.74. That, that was uh, for one of the golf ball trials that we did. And uh, it came out really close to the acceleration, uh, to the accepted value, which is 9.81. Um, notice that uh, the, the software uses the meter stick from the recorded video to calibrate the scale of uh, the length scale. This is another trial we, got, uh, we did for the steel ball and uh, we got the value of 9.83 meters per second squared. So throughout the trials that we took, um, we wanted to, to test out uh, a lot more with varying balls and uh, varying masses. What we found actually was that um, the accelerations more from these trials uh, did not match up. Some balls were actually uh, reported to have a higher velocity, I mean higher acceleration than intended. Uh, for example, a steel ball um, compared to a ping pong ball, we would, we would expect that a steel ball would have an acceleration closer to negative 9.8. However, this wasn't the case in some, some of the trials. Um, upon further examination, some of the videos, um, the ball actually dropped in front or behind the, uh, the meter stick, which acts as the scale. This actually caused a discrepancy in, um, in distance uh, and displacement. So to further test this hypothesis out, we created an apparatus where we, we basically uh, marked distances, 10 centimeter distances, in front and behind the meter stick, and as well as in line with the meter stick, uh, to test out uh, a pronounced effect of putting, dropping the ball in front of the meter stick and behind the meter stick. This is just a clarification of what we thought was happening in the program. Um, basically, this is our meter stick, which is, the, which is also the scale. Uh, if you drop the ball, for example, ball one, in front of the meter stick, it'll actually interpret uh, the ball to be moving faster than it should be, thus the accelerated, uh, the higher acceleration. Um, with conversely, if you drop the ball behind the meter stick, it'll have to travel a longer distance, but in actuality, uh, these two balls should be dropped at the same, uh, like should have the same dis displacement. And uh, in the Pascal software, it actually isn't, so we have to account for that issue. Furthermore, we, uh, we tested um, the tilt of a, of a camera from forward and backwards to see if there was any glaring issues behind that. Uh, what we found with these trials is that almost all acceleration values were decreased 
um, consistently. So this is also another thing to note, uh, and we did adjust for this in the experimental procedures. Furthermore, we tested a camera angle uh, with 20 degrees and 30 degrees results. Uh, in actuality, when students are carrying out this experiment, you shouldn't have your phone tilted like this, but we would want to see um, the effects of this. Oh, that's so. And so what we found from our uh, tilted camera was that it positioned our video like this. Uh, when we calculated the, the acceleration due to gravity, we got a very low number of negative nine. Um, we could actually fix this issue in PASCO by adjusting the scale to match with the, uh, with the vertical uh, displacement. So throughout the trials, these were all the recorded um, data that we found. And here you can see the, the pitch forward and pitch back. Almost all the data um, were significantly low and consistently low. So that's actually to be expected. Uh, with the rotations, all the values are actually skewed as well. Um, so what we learned from this is that we would want to drop the ball even with the uh, meter stick. And also we would want all our equipment, including the camera, to be as vertical as possible. This is, will allow uh, the motion of the ball to be uh, viewed very perpendicular to, uh, and then to be transferred onto the PASCO software to, uh, which will increase accuracy. Equipment. To form our experiment, you will need the following. A four-sided meter stick, a smartphone with slow motion camera ability, various balls, um, a balance to uh, make the balls uh, level, a stand and Pasco Capstone um, program. Uh, John Mark crea uh, created a phone holder with clamps. Um, if you're interested, interested in purchasing this product, please email us at vcgproductgmail.com uh, for this product. And um, also note that we are not liable for any phone damages <laughs> due to our product. Um, but yeah, it's made with a material of wood, handcrafted. Um, it's also um, created on um, Fusion 360, so it could be 3D printed, so that uh, multiple groups can have like use this product. Since it'll be like let's say four groups, they can use at once instead of sharing one. From the earlier results, we realized that uh, the acceleration for any of the balls lighter than the golf ball was significantly affected by air resistance. So uh, we recently uh, added the part to um, calculate the air resistance and the drag coefficient. To the right, you see the top two equations um, are uh, show the equation of motion for the uh, falling ball. And from, uh, by plotting, uh, right here, by plotting A versus uh, V squared uh, graph, um, you can find the slope, which will uh, help us find the drag coefficient. So, yeah. Volunteers. The team gathered six uh, volunteers to test our experiment um, with the use of uh, brownies as motivation oh. and as a reward. <laughs> um, they, uh, as you think they are reading, uh, they are reading our procedures. Uh, we need to see if it's clear, um, our procedures, if there's any misunderstanding uh, or confusion. We then later um, edited it to make it clear. Um, they formed two groups of three. And, uh, they're in this image, they're using uh, Pascal Capstone software that's already downloaded on our computers to analyze the G value. Um, results, uh, the first group, um, uh, received a G value to be negative 9.75 meters per second squared for the seal ball, and for ping pong ball, they received the G value to be negative 8 meters per second squared. Um, also, the second uh, group had more trouble analyzing the video with the software. 
uh, current task. Uh, we're uh, current task uh, editing the Rit lab manual entry. We actually just completed this uh, this week. Eventually, create new procedures and lab uh, manual entry for uh, projectile. And we would like to test our experiment with physics uh, professors. <laughs> you want to uh, compare uh, experienced and non-experienced uh, people in physics to see if it's like, easier for one group than the other group. And, yeah. uh, we're open to new interns. Um, I, this is my last day for summer one internship, and I will be here for summer two. So the G project will need a new intern. And we also need, still need volunteers to test out the new um, edited uh, lab manual um, what's your blog it's right here and if you're interested please email us